In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll give you tips and tricks for finessing the edges of your cardigan button bands in order to achieve a perfect finish. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, you can tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen to reveal the chapter titles and starting points of each section. This swatch I have here is simulating the right front of a cardigan. So when we talk about the right and left fronts of a cardigan, we're talking about it as it's worn. So if this, if I were wearing this right now, this would be hanging from the right side of my body and this would be pointed toward the center. So when you knit a button band that is perpendicular to the rest of the body of the sweater. In order to do that, you have to pick up stitches along a vertical edge. And I've done videos before, several videos on picking up stitches. I will link to those above and down in the video description. But one of the challenges to creating a button band like this is that frequently, the edges of the button band are not really in line with the cast on and bind off edges. They kind of pull up a little bit. You, you'll see a little bit of a jog um, at the top and at the bottom. So, uh, so what I'm going to show you today is how you can improve that look by, by ending up with an edge that is actually in line with the top and bottom um, and really improves the, the look of your finished item. So I have a, a swatch that I knit that's just like this one, only I haven't yet picked up the stitches along the edge. There's one other difference between these two swatches. This one was knit with knit two, purl two ribbing all the way to the edge. So that when I picked up uh, along that selvage, I ended up losing one of those stitches. Having a knit two at the edge is fine at a seam, because when you eliminate one stitch of a knit two on this edge and one stitch of a knit two on that edge, you still end up with uh, uh, two knits that are crossing the seam. But when you're picking up stitches along the edge and what you end up with is fabric that's going vertically, you don't have that knit stitch from the other edge to keep that stitch pattern continuity. So what I've done on this swatch is I've created three knits at the beginning so that when I do my pickup, I will end up with two knits. So that's gonna be one improvement right away. It's not related to the edge, it's just an improvement um, of what this type of fabric looks like um, and how you can end up with something that looks like this instead. So I'm going to pick up stitches along this edge for the ribbing. And first of all, I'm going to use a much smaller needle than what I'll use for the actual ribbing. This is a technique that I uh, typically use. Um, it just creates a tighter join between the two pieces of fabric. You don't have to do this. You can use the needle that you're planning on using for your ribbing. If you notice that when you pick up stitches, it things end up a little gappy um, or the stitches are looser, then you can do that. You can pick up stitches with a smaller needle. So I've picked up all of the stitches I want for my ribbing. I'm using Knit 2 Pearl 2 ribbing, which is a multiple of four. And so if I want my ribbing to be symmetrical, I want uh, to start and end with two knit stitches. So that means I need a multiple of four stitches plus two. So 28 is a multiple of four, and then I I needed two more than that. So I have picked up 30 stitches along the edge. But what you'll notice is that the location of this last stitch has to be inside this bind off edge. And at the beginning, that first stitch has to be inside uh, this uh, cast on edge. You can't actually pick up a stitch in that edge. So that automatically causes these to be a little bit further in than the actual edge. The second thing that happens is that even though that this is ribbing and we work ribbing because it is flat and it doesn't roll, those two columns of knit stitches at the edge are acting like two columns of stockinette fabric. So that means that that selvage wants to roll. Well, it's attached at the base, so the base doesn't roll, but the rest of that stitch column wants to roll to the purl side 
So you're only seeing half of that stitch. You're seeing it from profile. If you turn this on the side, you can see that selvage stitch there. And at this edge, you get the same problem. You're seeing the side of that edge stitch. It's rolling to the side. It's attached at the base, which again is inside this cast on edge. So that is why you get this kind of a jog in the top and the bottom. So I have picked up the same number of stitches that I have in this swatch, but now I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to cast on one stitch using a backwards loop. So I'm going to use the thumb method. So I'm going to have the yarn is behind my thumb. I'm going to swing it around like this, just like you would for a long tail cast on. Um, and then I'm going to put that on my needle. So it is uh, crossing to the right like this. And then I'm going to come back here where this yarn tail is hanging where I started my pick up. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cast on one stitch at this end. end. Now technically I could have done that cast on before I did all of the pick up, but I think it's just easier to do both of them at the same time. So what we're doing here is we're adding an extra stitch at each edge that is not attached to the fabric. It, there's nothing underneath here. So rather than having two knits at the beginning and end of the right side of the fabric, we're going to work these stitches as knits also. So that means from the face of, from the right side of the fabric, we're, we're going to have three knits at each edge. Since the first row that we are going to work is going to be a wrong side row, that means I'm going to start with three purl stitches. Now, if you were working in knit one, purl one ribbing instead, where you would normally want to make your symmetry with uh, an odd number of stitches by starting and ending with a knit, again, you would cast on these extra stitches and those would appear as right side knits so that when you worked the wrong side, you would work two purls and then you would do knit one, purl one all the way and then you would end with two pearls on this side. So what is the effect of this? What happens when you do that? Well, you end up with something that looks like this. So I have, what you see here are those two knits at the edge that go right up to the edge. And then that third stitch that's not attached, that's cast on, it actually fully ro uh, rolls to the wrong side. It doesn't just uh, roll halfway since it's not attached. And it's that extra stitch that fills in that space above these two stitches and puts it in alignment with the cast with the bind off here. And it does the same on this edge. So you have those two stitches going right up to the edge. And then you have that third stitch that's rolling over and it just fills in that space below. So, so it doesn't get pulled in. And that's how you can create these really perfect edges. This video focused on tips and tricks for finessing the finish on your button bands and buttonhole bands. For other videos on picking up stitches, you might like this playlist up here. For other finessing tips and tricks, you might like this playlist over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.